Salutations everyone, Future Tristan here. This video you're about to watch is the mastering deep dive of a song called Freak Beat by the band Sunday Mourners. If you'd like a little more context into this video, feel free to click here to watch the deep dive of the mixing session so you can really get a sense of what went on in this session. Thanks and enjoy. And yeah, that was it. Wow. So um, it does not, it did not need to be this simple and I did not need to make it as super complex in the mix. So therefore like, you know, I'm glad how everything kind of shaped up to be when I was mixing it. And uh, I then sent it off to Max to, he, he said he was going to cover the mastering or actually wait. No, I did the mastering because <laughs> <laughs> um, I do remember that part actually, which I could show. Because um, I get confused because uh, there have been other songs of theirs that I did do just the mixing for and Max did the mastering for. So oh, okay. there's a couple songs in that case. But in this case, I did do both. And I could always pull that up. Sure. Just take a look at the masters. Typically when working, I tend to have a, uh, I tend to have a uh, mastering template. Um, I have a couple. I have... One of work that I worked on from 2020 to 2021. And then I have my general one that's for bit rates of um, 24, 44, 1. And then I have this one for 24, 48. And for this song, uh, Freak Beat, I think it was 24, 44, 1. So that's why I will do that. So I've worked on a couple tracks since then. So now I just got to find that one way up in here what are you there we go what's going on here why do you have all these tracks in one in one session yeah um again just for uh for uh sample and bit depth purposes this these are just all my tracks that i've recorded in 24 44 1 and then in another session i will have some in that i've recorded in 24 48 and i just like having that separation just because like i feel like the mixes and the mastering does get a little bit weird, I guess, when you tend to kind of like um, put them all into one session, I guess. So like if I'm importing a, a 44, or sorry, a 48 session into a 44 session, I feel like I am naturally just gonna degrade the, the file as is, whereas I'd like to keep it as much of the original file as intact as possible mm -hmm. so that's why i like having that separation um it also just kind of helps me keep track of my masters too of just in general of as far as what i've done in the past so that's so you can reference to like old stuff you've done pretty much yeah and like if someone needs a master redone i could just go back here or i could even just go check and see like what i've done in the past and do better from that hmm. so yeah that's why I, that's why i tend to do with this and the way that I organize my files here is that I just import the mix. I always have um, my loudness meter and my multimeter going at the same time as I'm mastering. Um, I always have these kind of pulled up. Um, and I put whatever I'm going to process um, onto the actual channel strip itself of the song. And so I never put these on the main mix bus for these individual songs. So... That's how I tend to just kind of organize everything. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I have this song. And again, it was originally called Horse Face, but they changed it later on to Freak Beat. I don't know why, but they just did. I think that was a good move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freak Beat sounds much better. <laughs> than Horse Face, yeah. Yeah, Horse Face. <laughs> and so here we have the general mix of the song. Um, without any of my mastering plugins going into it. I do do something a little bit interesting, I guess, with my automation in that in the very beginnings of all of my songs, as you could kind of see right here, I always do a little fade in, um, very, very close to when it starts. This was mostly because it was institutionalized in me when I went to my recording class in Orange Coast College when my teacher said you should always do a little fade in because sometimes mixes can be clipped in the very beginning so it kind of helps smooth it into whenever it's being played somewhere so I was like all right I find th that it'll like click or pop sometimes 
and like at the beginning of clips. Yeah. So I've always like it when I um, right before I send my track off to get mastered, mm. I go into each individual region mm. and I do like little fade in. Yeah. Yeah, like super slight, but yeah. just so like to avoid any sort of chance of uh, of a click or anything like that. Yeah, like yeah. maybe I can't hear it in my system, you know. Yeah, exactly. So and that's a good good idea. Essentially, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. So. Um, and then the very ending of the song, um, that's when I will do my little fade out of the song in general, do, 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 which is right here. Um, I tend to export my mixes a little bit longer than, um, what I'm gonna, uh, master it to, but that's just for me to just kind of decide later on. Um, with this one, it was just a very tiny bit that I cut off. And typically, when mastering two with the repeat cycle right here, I tend to just export whatever it is it's measured to. So that's my general process with all these cutoffs with all these songs is I cut them off where I left the cycle bar last time. So that's just kind of like how I generally work on this. So then here, in the very beginning of the chain, we do have a linear EQ that's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I have this probably because I was comparing it between this and the F6, which is, I guess, doing nothing as well. <laughs> <laughs> the mix was so good. I so didn't good. Need a master. <laughs> probably the settings got lost at some point, so oh well. <laughs> but. With that said, I did use a limiter to just bring up the volume. Or maybe I just didn't do anything with the EQ. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, that's just kind of like how I left the song, just kind of like brought up the volume. I probably even, I probably did do some EQ, but for some reason it just didn't get saved. Um, it looks like in this case too, especially, um, this plugin was for some reason saved as left and right, whereas I never use it in that case. I always use it as a mid side. Um, so whenever I'm, whenever I am mastering something, I tend to, uh, pull up the mid side and that's how I get to expand the width of a song. So that's, mm. that's what I typically tend to do. That's a pretty cool tactic. I like that. Yeah. Um, I, I do implement a little bit, um, what, uh, Brent from Hear No Evil, uh, told us one time where it was this trick of, Basically, ra raising the the high frequencies and the mid, or sorry, the low frequencies um, n with a dynamic EQ, but not to compress them, but more to like expanding. Oh. Basically, using it as an expander rather than a compressor, if anything. Yeah. Um, so what I would tend to do, I would tend to bring up the sides a little bit using the shelf. Also the low end. And I basically like have it move a little bit as it's going. So have it be a little bit more active, I guess, in how it's moving. Inclusive, can it? Yeah. I'm basically doing the same thing here with the low end, just kind of like um, messing with how it moves, you know? So I tend to do this mostly for the side process, just to kind of like bring out, again, the width of this song. Um, and then for the mids, that's where I'll mostly tackle the frequencies that are troubling me a little bit of whatever it is I'm mastering. So that tends to be my general process for this. Hmm. And as far as like limiting, um, I try not to be too crazy with it. Um, in this case of this song, I'm pretty sure I did have to be a little bit crazy just to get that desired effect of the general era of this song. Uh, in 
this day. Not too crazy with this song, actually, because if anything, I just brought up the gain for sure. Um, but the gain reduction that is happening, it's not going past uh, one decibel of gain reduction. So it's generally keeping the dynamics that I did have in my mix. So um, I tend to just kind of retain that as much as I can when it comes to uh, the mixes or the masters that I do. So you're only uh, compressing very slightly. Yeah, if anything. Yeah. Yes. And from that, you know, just uh, just kind of comparing in mono too. That's what this uh, gain plugin is for. Oh, you and then yeah that's just my general process of how i got this stuff mastered nice yeah so just making it loud and squashing it slightly <laughs> exactly exactly for this song yes yeah i try to be you know a lot more surgical sometimes with other um masters that i do um whether it be just for like some crazy thing that i'm doing like in this case you know for this master that i did for this artist named saint keo i did a lot more movements in this case for the eq of it mm -hmm. and i brought more of the width with using the screamer tape again with the mid side section and then using two limiters just to kind of bring up the volume but also control the dynamics so <laughs> <laughs> thought it was gonna be lots uh, like compressed lot less than that I, it was cool, like you added, there's like distortion in every single, or saturation, I guess, in every single chain of that. So yeah. each individual instrument has its own distortion. Mm -hmm. um, and then you add a bus that adds more distortion. Yeah. <laughs> and the master bus has distortion. Yeah. Then you go master and you add a little bit more distortion. Yeah. Exactly. But it all adds like really nicely, um, mm -hmm. even though it's just like a plugin. Yeah. It legit sounds like it was made back in the day, which is crazy. Yeah, that's so, crazy. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny, too, when I finished mixing it, I was like, this doesn't sound that great. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, like, it sounds like how it, did, how it does, like, with those records that the Sunday Mourners and I love. Um, so, like, I, f I feel like I did achieve that. And then when the song was released, you know, people were like, wow, this mix sounds amazing. And, like, you did such a great job, David. And it's like... <laughs> Okay, sure. <laughs> like I, I was just like unsure what they were kind of hearing, but yeah, you know, like even you, like I'm very surprised that you love it. So yeah, yeah, yeah I was. Well, I didn't even know. I was surprised when I heard that you even mixed it. Yeah, because it sounds like a Target commercial. Oh, like, okay. It should be on Target. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So like it's up to that level of like um, quality. Yeah, quality. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It just sounds like I, I just like the whole vibe of the song. It's really cool. It's like very dancey, but like has that old school sound and old school vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and like all their songs, especially from their newest EP, Live at the Pearly Gates, like I did most of the, or I did mixing for half of the EP, and just a lot of it are some of my favorite mixes I've ever done. And just like the overall vibe is really there uh, as far as like dancing, energetic, very. Sort of chaotic too. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely, yeah, I get that vibe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when they when we played with them at uh, FTG Studios in Santa Ana, um, we we went on before they did, and then they came out after us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember at the near the end of their set, they were like. Hey, uh, do we get time for one more song? And then the sign goes like, "Yeah, that's fine." Yeah. And they proceeded to play like a twelve-minute song. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And it was just you know like mostly him on the ground, with, like playing guitar, shredding and stuff. You and never know what you're gonna get with them. So. Yeah, screaming into a mic. Yep. It's very memorable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very entertaining show. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely good times. That's right. Yeah. So, so thank you for indulging with me no problem thank you i love like this is a really cool it's cool to see it because i hear one thing i also really liked was like th the exact place of like the how do i put it where it faded out like the reverb and the delay tails mm. of like the vocals yeah. there's like this gap where it's just just that yeah. just the reverb and delay tail of the vocal mm -hmm. and then it as soon as it ends it, it, everything just kicks in perfectly that's great it's yeah. crazy how like you just time that so perfectly yeah and yeah. that that wasn't even like put a lot in I didn't put a lot of thought into that, you know? Like, it was just me, like, hearing and reacting with it, you know? Just mm. kind of like, okay, maybe I can make that a little bit shorter. But, like, 
I didn't think like, okay, it should be this many repetitions before it kicks back in, you know? Like mm. it, it, it was all very much like Instinct. whatever whatever was instinctual kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. It sounds great. So that's cool. You got good instincts. Yeah, thank you. Unlike me. <laughs> to, I'm constantly like, oh, I got to go back to, you know, I'll check the next day, yeah. come back to the mix the next day and be like, okay, all right, you screwed up here, you screwed up here. <laughs> yeah, totally. And just like fixing things over like a period of a couple of weeks. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for showing us. Of course. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it out there. Yeah, Yeah. this 30-minute <laughs> breakdown. I think it's been longer than <laughs> it's that. It's been longer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, this has been David Antonio Garcia, uh, audio engineer. Uh, he mixed this um, EP, right, the EP? Yeah, the EP, half of it at least. Mm, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for Sunday Mornings, uh, their EP just came out, right? Not yeah, long ago. came out uh, earlier this year. Yeah, Live at the Pearly Gates. Mm -hmm. Go take a listen. It's good stuff. That's right. It's good stuff. Yeah. Especially if it's been mixed by this guy. There you go. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Sunday Mornings, for letting me mix your stuff. Yeah, thanks for making great music, guys. All right, we'll catch you around. Let me know what your favorite uh, audio tip was in this thing. <laughs> I think mine was... Um, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the saturation plug-in, maybe? The saturation plug-in blew my mind, man. Yeah. It's, it's all throughout this whole song, and it sounds great. Like, yeah. And in, in any, on any instrument, it sounded good. And it's free. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm downloading that, like, ASAP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's really nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. See you around. <sighs> <laughs> that was cool. Can I listen to the drums again? Yeah.